Alec, the American Legislative Exchange Council has been in the news a lot lately, and that's a good thing. It's about time. Unfortunately, though, a lot of the articles on Alec are not properly conveying what the organization really is. So, what is Alec? Check it out. Alec is a mechanism. It's a powerful organization based off an idea, and the idea is pretty simple. ALEC connects corporate lobbyists with state legislators and helps to push corporate written legislation into the states, all 50 of them. The process works like this. ALEC holds a policy conference at a lush resort at, say, the Ritz-Carlton on an island off the coast of Florida. There, corporate lobbyists and ALEC-sponsored state legislators gather behind closed doors to assemble in task forces and vote on and adopt quote-unquote model legislation. Now, most of these bills are written by corporate lawyers themselves. Furthermore, corporate representatives have an equal vote with state legislators on whether or not the bills pass in the task force meetings. Think about that for a second. So, once adopted as model legislation, a bill goes into the ALEC policy manual and is then pushed out by the organization to its members in every legislature across the country. That's why certain laws, like ALEC's Stand Your Ground bill, spread like wildfire across the states in such a short period of time. It's coordinated, and it's not a coincidence. So what do ALEC lawmakers get out of it? Well, they get to do cool stuff, for free, all paid for by the corporations that are writing the laws. See, ALEC has what they call a scholarship fund, which is, like everything in ALEC, funded by corporations. ALEC legislators travel to these conferences in lush resorts, lay out by the pool, drink fine wine, eat tasty meals, smoke Cuban cigars, enjoy massages and tanning beds and daycare centers for their children, who of course come along on the vacation. <laughs> I mean, work trip, and after these legislators get to expense all of that. They also get much needed campaign funds for their upcoming elections. That part of the process isn't as institutionalized as a scholarship fund, but it's definitely there and very real. When voting for a bill that a corporate lawyer just presented at a task force meeting, an ALEC politician sets up an implied quid quo pro agreement between him and herself and the corporate lobbyist. I vote for your bill and you use your employee PAC fund to put money in my campaign coffers. Or at least that's how it used to work before the Supreme Court Citizens United decision. Now corporations can dig right into their treasuries to support a candidate with IE funding. And what do corporations get from Alec? Well, that one's pretty obvious. They get legislation that they wrote that will benefit their bottom lines signed into law. Of course, what's disregarded in this process is whether or not the American people benefit from legislation. And let me be clear, they don't. So let's say your corporation is CCA, the largest private prison company in the country and you see the best way of filling beds in your prisons and thus increasing your profits is by incarcerating migrant workers. You make sure to join Alec's Public Safety and Elections Task Force. That way, Alec will adopt and propagate bills like Arizona's SB 1070 or support three strike laws. Or let's say your corporation is ExxonMobil. You make sure to have lobbyists present on the Energy, Environment, and Agriculture Task Force so you can introduce and approve legislation that will benefit your subsidiary, XTO. Legislation that creates loopholes so that you don't have to disclose what poisonous chemicals you put in the fluid you use to unlock unconventional gas plays using hydraulic fracturing. You know, the chemicals that can seep into our water supply and give people cancer? Those chemicals. The list goes on and on, and so does the money, and so does the cycle. Now, when people hear about this, they get angry, and when they get angry enough, they vote out out legislators. So another part of Alec's mission is to restrict the vote. Here's what one of Alec's founders, Paul Weyrich, has to say on the matter. Now many of our Christians have what I call the goo-goo syndrome. Good government. They want everybody to vote. I don't want everybody to vote. Elections are not won by a majority of people. They never have been from the beginning of our country, and they are not now. As a matter of fact, our leverage in the elections quite candidly goes up as the voting populace goes down. And Alec is making sure the voting population is going down. That's why they've been pushing voter ID laws and other undemocratic measures. That's why, in the upcoming election, roughly 5 million Americans will find it substantially harder to cast their ballot. But people are starting to get it. Alec is being exposed. As of the publishing of this video, 14 companies, including Kraft, Coca-Cola, and Kaplan, have renounced their membership from the organization and roughly 30 lawmakers have done so as well. That momentum needs to continue, and ALEC, ALEC corporations, and ALEC lawmakers must be held accountable. So the next time you read an article that blatantly distorts the truth, write the editor and make a clarification. ALEC is simply not, to quote the Wall Street Journal, a group of state lawmakers. You can find out more about ALEC and how you can help fight it by clicking on the links below.